Mm. You're right. Uh, so yeah, it's an exciting one. Um, but we'll let us do the intros before we crack on to the protocol. So uh, yeah, uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm Dominic Ryder. Um, my background prior to Alvaro was in uh, derivatives trading, traditional finance. Um, then after that into wealth management um, before, yeah, launching a couple of protocols uh, in 2021, my first one, and then um, Alvaro working on with Callum since uh, early 22, I believe, but uh, you know, pass over to Callum. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Callum. I'm one of the co-founders of Alvaro Protocol. Uh, my background in the traditional world is in business management. Um, I've been running my own business in the UK for the last 10 years. I got into the Web3 space in 2018, initially as an investor. Uh, met Dom late 2021. Uh, and then sort of from 2022 onwards, we have been developing the Alvaro Protocol and the ERC-7621. Um, the token standard itself, well, I'll, I'll let Dom, do you, if you want to get into uh, sort of an overview of the token the standard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, yeah, in terms of like composability and the ability of builders to innovate on top of the 7621 and Alvaro in particular, uh, the world is your oyster uh, somewhat in the fact that the 7621 is is set up for builders. Uh, the reason why is that the 7621, whenever any outside or external contributor adds liquidity to that, they are given uh, ERC-20 LP tokens, which are fully transferable and represent their overall share of the basket. And obviously having the ERC-20 transferable LP token gives you all of the innovation potential that you can with any ERC-20. So you can build staking governance, you can add liquidity, you can uh, build derivatives, you can build lending strategies, arbitrage between the ERC-20 liquidity pool and the overall 7621 in terms of AUM versus market cap. So you have a whole spectrum of composability and infrastructure that you can build on top of and how you choose to do that um, is completely yeah, down to you and uh, and your prerogative. So what we're trying to do with the 7621 is to decentralize the asset management industry. So allowing anybody to become a uh, effective fund manager uh, without needing to get through the glass ceiling of having a uh, you know, a CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst, uh, or the IMC Investment Management Certificate, all of these are needed to get a role in sort of like a JP Morgan or a Goldman Sachs. Um, but yeah, there's a, a few other um, use cases uh, as well, um, but we don't want to make it too too easy. Uh, I'll pass on to Callum to chat through the actual monitoring side. So the way the way it works is it's built on top of the ERC seven two one. It allows users to uh, basically compile an unlimited number of ERC twenty tokens, wrap it in an in a, a seven two one wrapper, uh, and then as Dom mentioned before, it allows third party contribution and withdrawal. And at each one of these events, the unique BTS LP tokens BTS is our sort of NFT name for the 7621 stands for basket token standard. Um, so at each one of these events, the BTS issues unique ERC20 LP tokens. And that's really where this standard uh, stands out from the 6551, the 404 and uh, other standards that have attempted to create these sort of wallet type vault structures. Um, in terms of asset monitoring, Obviously, a big uh, segment of the market that we're going after is traditional finance and building all of this on chain and, and providing a, an avenue for uh, the migration on chain of these traditional funds uh, and, and existing blockchain funds is that obviously it offers all of the transparency uh, that blockchain offers. So uh, there's no sort of hidden um, uh, 
funds involved in or assets involved in these. There's no sort of hidden products. You know, everything is very transparent on chain. It also opens up opportunities for um, much more straightforward auditing of of baskets. You know, processes that in traditional finance take or have, can take months and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars can all be done almost instantly um, by utilizing this new asset class. Yeah, great. Um, so, yeah, again, um, in terms of what people can build on top, we are aiming to become as cost chain compatible as possible. The reason why we're on Ethereum is that there's two considerations. Obviously, uh, number one is is the fees consideration, but the main one for targeting institutions is liquidity and depth. As a decentralized asset management protocol, we need to be led by where the liquidity is uh, and the TVL for DeFi and for on-chain, obviously, Ethereum stands out. And so uh, solving the, the fees issue, obviously, of uh, minting one of these to your wallet, all of the transactions that happen within that, where it's purchasing the respective percentage of whatever tokens have been inputted, uh, is going to be you know, something that's got to be secondary to the liquidity element because the target is on the institutional side, but we do want accessibility. Uh, and so if people want to be uh, yeah, providing that uh, and building on top of it on other chains, then by all means, this token standard, as long as it's solidity based, uh, can be yeah fully uh, utilized and, and put across chain. So yeah, moving on, any questions uh we've got uh some of the technical team here as well for anything on the coding side just uh yeah let us know uh from wherever you're speaking from discord or youtube or wherever where are our questions coming in from ben? on the discord channels and youtube i got the first question here um is there any minimum requirements such as starting capital or any asset allocation for minting a BTS token? So on Alvara, it's important to differentiate as well between Alvara and the token standard. We've built the token standard, but obviously as a token standard, it's fully open source. Anyone, anywhere can mint one at any time. Alvara uh, is kind of a consumer facing uh, platform where anyone can, can um use the token standard very simply and easily without requiring a developer or or any development skills themselves so via alvara uh, if you want to create a bts and, and mint it on chain can we actually um can we share our screen and just go through the test net dom yeah for sure show them yeah. quickly see if i can um, if, okay if, if you're using our platform to mint your BTS, then we do have a one ETH minimum requirement um, upon minting from the from the original minting wallet. This is really there we go. So this is just to prevent the creation, the frivolous creation of of sort of hundreds of thousands of funds flooding the leaderboard um, and uh, you know confusing potential uh prospective investors or users of the platform <laughs> so this is the uh this is the bts factory setup you enter your name ticker logo this is the composition of the bts itself At the moment we're on sepolia testnet so you're going to require a sepolia eth to use uh the testnet the links there, testnet.alvara.xyz, which will circulate afterwards as well, but anyone can use it. We've had 4,000 plus BTS created in the last uh, six weeks since we launched Testnet Live for the public. Oh, I need to actually get onto Sepolio. I think I'm on ETH. Hopefully it doesn't destroy my progress. Um, there we go. So for, to... for Sepolio, we've set a 0 0.01 minimum uh, obviously to do with supply and, and people using the faucets. But uh, when we go live on mainnet, there'll be a one ETH minimum contribution at the time of minting. There we go. 
new transaction. Now we've got to wait for the uh, indexing, which is where we have to spin up conversation whilst we uh, <laughs> wait for Sapodia yeah. to catch up. Oh, we got confirmation. Now let's wait for this indexing. All part of the fun. So aside, aside from the BTS factory, which allows users to mint, contribute and redeem from any existing BTS, uh, we've also built a leaderboard. Now the leaderboard pulls data from every ERC 7621 minted on chain, whether via Alvara or otherwise, um, with an associated BTS page where users can see the current composition of the BTS, current weightings, the TVL, the manager, manager's wallet risk ratings um dom will navigate through to it in a sec sort of this uh coin gecko coin market cap style leaderboard um allows ranking by a number of different metrics just as coin gecko does and has all of the same monetization features of coin gecko and coin market cap we're back onto Spolia just to show people the transaction. Like I say, uh, we are liquidity led because of Ethereum having the most TVL. But as you can see, it is a complex transaction uh, and it will cost a fair amount of gas fees. So, you know, if we are attracting institutions, you know, the gas fees to, to mint one of these isn't necessarily uh, as important. But, you know, we want to populate the platform with as many baskets as possible. And so, um, we are launching on Avalanche, um, might even be today or tomorrow, uh, this week anyway, for the first iteration, but we will be launching cross-chain. Um, we do also have the option of um, potentially having some sort of internal uh, bridge and derivative network, but obviously that comes with its own uh, problems where, for example, someone was to input, let's say they're doing a meme basket and they've got uh, Pepe, Shiba, and uh, Bonk on Solana, uh, using some sort of Oracle network in order to purchase the Solana version, lock that into a bridge, and then mint a derivative Bonk on ERC20 uh, to take up that mechanism. Because that way, the same mechanic is still taking place where the actual asset is being purchased on the Solana side. It's just using Oracles instead. And obviously, that has its own problems of you know, centralization, decentralization, who you're using and everything that comes with that. But um, but yeah, fully able to innovate um, on and around that as to what's going to be the best uh, option. But yeah, you can see that this is minted to the wallet. Um, and yeah, importantly, within the transaction hash, you can see that the individual ERC20 LP tokens are here as well. Obviously, just the one holder. At present, which is the manager perspective of their ETH contribution. It's quite a long answer to uh, the first question, so I'm conscious <laughs> that we should probably let, let someone else that's answered other people's questions. We got quite a lot of questions. I think one that's worth uh, continuing pursuing from 0x Stardust here on Discord is how can we integrate Alvarez leaderboard live feed into building our application when monitoring? real-time performance metrics and potential transactions. Is there any APYs or SDKs that are available to facilitate this? Uh, so we've we've put together a product tech specs uh, notion site, which we can share um, after this meeting with all the front end, back end and blockchain tech stacks, API endpoints. Um, is there anything Sham and Assad are also on this call and they're from our development team at Troon. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, guys? Hey, guys. So we pretty much uh, consolidated all of the information in terms of APIs. You will be able to go through the documentation, understand the flowchart of the APIs, the cron job schedules, uh, with detailed explanation of each API that's working on the back end. So we believe that, you know, it's going to help you uh, figure out the code and integrate new boards into your system. But Shaw and I both are uh, available on Discord for further questions as well. Perfect. 
So, and, we, and we've set up a separate, if I'm right in saying, we've set up a separate staging environment specifically for the hackathon, uh, Assad. Yeah. 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 With separate API endpoints, et cetera. So, um, we'll share the, the, uh, tech specs pack after this. And if anyone has any additional questions, jump in the discord, uh, these guys will be in there to help as will I, if there's any other questions, but, um, a lot of the development questions will be slightly above my pay grade, I imagine. Next question. Um, next question is, is there any performance optimization tips for building in ERC 7621? How do you handle iTransaction output volumes? Is there any tips there? The Assad needs to again. Yeah, uh, over to you Assad. Great question. I think Sean can provide more input in terms of increasing performance. Yeah, sure. Like it, it, uh, we are using the smart home track on the HTM site. So if you are like if you're doing any basic uh, implementation while calling our transitions, like uh, if there are any contribution work, you will go with the off chain. Do not provide more. A string or length, the, all these computation on your transaction, and it can be done. By the way, we have already tried our smartphone to be optimized as much as we can, and there are already like a low cost, but still, we are getting some token from the Uniswap router and all these things. So, so hopefully, you don't see much gas cost uh, rather than the swapping the token and getting the token from the Uniswap. Oh, thanks. Uh, all right. I have another question here. Is there any testing frameworks that are recommended or tools for developing and debugging ERC 7621 contracts? Uh, uh, Shep. Yeah, for tracing or debugging tool, you can use hard hat and their environment. So like it, it is all uh, depend on the developer's side and what they want to use. But I think hard hat or foundry are the best tools they can use to, to debug it. And they can fork our smart contract if they want to do testing on the test net. And they will try some unit test analysis and try check and, uh, if there is any issue. Even they can use this for the gas optimization if required. Awesome. I think one last question we can take is, um, is there any comprehensive technical documentation, guides or tutorials for building on 7621 or integrating with Alvaro where you guys recommend the devs going? Yeah, yeah. So um, as mentioned, the product tech specs uh, notion document will be shared after this. Um, <clears throat> if there's anything in there, or if there's anything you need that's not in there, then please jump in the discord and, uh, we'll be able to sort it out. Awesome. Is also a virtual environment slash sandbox environment set up for this hackathon, right? Yeah. Cool. How can developers access it, access it again, Callum? Uh, we'll share the link in the discord and uh if there's anything where else that we can share it in relation to the hackathon if you let me know um I'll, I'll shoot the link over after this call awesome yeah we'll share it on twitter youtube every social that we've been posting um i'd like to thank you guys so much for doing this webinar and presentation if anyone has any further questions please go to the next top blockchain startup discord channel or direct through our dev post email links. Please ask us any questions regarding to Alvara. We'll be here to help. There's also Alvara team members directly on the Discord channel there to help. So please feel free to ping. And guys, let's keep building. Really excited to see what's gonna come out. Likewise, Likewise. very excited to see what everyone can come up with. Snap, definitely. Cool. Also, so where should where should everyone keep in touch with Alvara to follow the latest updates? Twitter, Discord, Telegram. Um, I think if you go onto our uh, Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it nowadays, there's a 
a link tree which will have all of our socials. But yeah, all the standard Discord, Telegram, Twitter. Yeah. Awesome. What's the handle again? At Alvaro. Uh, at Alvaro. Yeah. We'll share all of that in the YouTube video comments as well, uh, or in the description, everywhere this is being posted. I'll give you a link to all of our socials. Sweet. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Nice. Thanks, Thanks